up, folks. Alrighty, here we go. We have one spot left and one playbook to go, and that is the Minnesota Vikings. Grinding away doing this. After I'm done with this, what else is there to do for me? As a matter of fact, after this game, I began the process of selling off my entire team. So, <laughs> away we go. So, Vikings. What can we say about the Vikings playbook? As we begin here with um, some weak eye. I mean, you got to be able to run the ball against that. Look, if you can't run the ball against that, there's no hope. But, um, anyhow, we're going to begin under center, which isn't terrible, actually. Before we get to the fun stuff out of shotgun, but um, playbook in general, it's kind of weird. Curious to see um, what really inspired this bad boy, because I was kind of scratching my head based off of what I know about how uh, North Turner likes to operate and what this playbook actually does. You know, long story short, Norv is a bit of a throwback. Norv abruptly retired midway through the season this year. Um, for the Vikes, but North a bit of a throwback. Power run, play action, deep shots downfield, five-step drop, seven-step drop, all about yards per attempt. He's from that Joe Gibbs strand of air choreo football. Power run and don't fool around the passing game. Go all out all the time when you drop back to throw. That was the M.O. in Dallas. That was the M.O. in San Diego, and that's what he tried to, to run course of the Vikings, but a combination of an aging and injury-prone Adrian Pearson, god-awful O-line play, god-awful receiver play, and quarterbacks who are either unwilling or unable to um, push the ball down the field, and, you know, you got what you got, which was a bit of an offensive mess for the Vikings for the past uh, couple of years, and, you know, truth be told, I kind of agree with the um, thought that that approach to offense is kind of dated. Pass rushers now in the NFL, they're so athletic now, they're so fast, that it's really hard to make a living on deep drop, long developing uh, route combinations down the field on a consistent basis. You're just going to get your quarterback hit and hit off and not enough good offensive linemen to go around. Really hard to keep those kind of units together in a salary cap era. And it kind of goes against the meta of the NFL, so to speak. But in the video game world, you can pretty much still get by doing that. But there's very little of that in this playbook. This is, playbook is a weird combination of some of that stuff. And this from out of nowhere, shotgun offset, college, college style, bubble screen, wide receiver screen, um, shallow cross, spread game. Now, this playbook does have... A lot, I mean a lot, a lot of C routes, a lot of uh, comeback routes, post routes, deep square ins. I'd say it's about maybe 30, 40% that stuff and 60 to 70% um, everything else. Just this, this weird amalgamation of what you see all over the playbooks, the common stuff you see in the rest of the playbooks and um, spread type of um, football. Now, uh, on that previous play, I threw that double, not that double, but that um, deep comeback way, way too early. The one on the left broke fine. It broke on time. The other one didn't. I have no idea why. And the INT happened. And here, out of this tray open, this is one of the few um, playbooks that has a trip style set that is four wide. Most of these shotgun uh, trips and shotgun sets in general that spread the field are 11 personnel, three wide receivers, one tight end, and a back. Um, this one actually has some four wide receiver sets um, out of the shotgun, you know, spread sets. And the good thing about it is that the shotgun sets tend to be mostly uh, shotgun all set as opposed to in line. And as I said repeatedly before, the offset, the advantage of having the halfback offset is that they do a better job for whatever reason of picking up edge pressure as opposed to having no chance of picking it up when you're in a shotgun spread or trips inline set. I would say you have maybe a 45 to 50% chance of picking up a nickel blitzer off the edge. 
when the back is offset. For whatever reason, they do a better job, a much better job of picking up the um, edge blitzers when they're offset. Here, I'm going to offset, uh, double set. And the bad thing about these zone reads in this playbook, if they are... This playbook is littered with the zone reads that have the slot receiver not blocking but doing bubble, and you see what happens. That slot defender, they never react to the bubble from the slot. They don't react to that slot motion ever, and when you get a keep read, he's right there to kill the quarterback. So it makes the read option plays pretty much useless. I'm going to come right back here in a trips, wide trips all set. Again, the um, back and an offset alignment going to run an out route here, but again, the shame of it there is that you have no option to bubble, to throw the bubble screen to the slot receiver. Give me a triple option there, so when the um, corner crashes down on me and leaves us the uh, bubble receiver wide open, I can hit him, but no. So, you know, it is what it is as far as that goes. So now I'm kind of getting my tempo on in this two-minute drill situation here. I got Jay Ajay. This is the motivator version with the uh, plus two run blocking to your entire offensive line. That comes in pretty handy from time to time. So I'm able to punch it in here. And I got the ball back after a turnover. Your normal just wide trips flood. I try to go up top to Randy Moss, but he usually deflects that. So I have to settle for the field goal there. So, you know, the playbook isn't bad by any stretch. It's not the worst playbook. It's not among the worst playbooks in the game. It's not near that because, like I said, the offset shotgun alignments give you some good downhill running and some better edge protection. Not as consistent as you would like, but it gives you something. Um, at least you won't be completely left helpless if you go against a nickel and dollar uh, corner blitzer. Here I'm running the good old reliable play action um, in at a trips, wide trips. I was tree open actually. You got a Vikes dig there. I really like that play. Smash. Um, again, a lot of corner posts, deep comeback, um, cor uh, corner in, square in, shallow cross combos. And it, it again reminds you that because of the fact that edge blocking off the um, edge, obviously, where else would it be coming from? But it is, it is just a sad reminder that if. Edge Heat wasn't so overpowered in this year's game. How many more playbooks would be um, viewed much more highly than they are? If this playbook didn't suffer from those handicaps, or if the game didn't have such overpowered Edge Heat, this playbook would be in the top half playbooks of the game, in my opinion, as I house the inside zone there. Again, I have some really good horses up front there, and then a Jai adds plus two to the run block, and there you go. Single back is pretty good. Single back, deuce close, one of the better sets in the game. You can run the wham, the stretch, the counter. You can run bench. Bench gets open against everything. You know, just pick the open guy <laughs> and get your free completion. Bench is just a mess. Again, you see your dagger concept there, square in, streak, shallow cross combo. I'm going to run power here. I get some nice muscle there. Well, enough muscle there. I put a really nice one in a little bit. The eye twins is nice. I like their eye twins. I like the ace. I like the single back um, doubles and the wide trips. I didn't really use that this game. I form tight pair. Vikes power G. You see this in the Bengals playbook as well. Uh, difference between power G and power is that the power G, the um, guard on the strong side, is the one who's pulling as opposed to the weak side guard. Again, third and one. I could flip it if I wanted to, but, eh, you know. Get my damn one yard. 11 carries for a buck one, so I'm doing pretty good in the ground here. Coming out and wide receiver drag, and again, drag, corner, square in combo. Over and over again. Some kind of a variation of a corner, square in, corner, post, square in, corner, deep comeback, square in, deep comeback, seam, square in. So you have those aggressive downfield route concepts, but um, you also have a lot of just weird, out of nowhere, spread option stuff. Don't know why it's there, but it is. Full house, normal wide. Weird thing about this formation is that none of the runs, I mean, it's a balanced formation, so you can flip the play easily, but none of the runs go to the left. They all go to the right, which is just bizarre to me. But like I said, since it's a balanced formation, if you want to, you know, flip the play, you can do so without tipping anything. And I get a nice little gain off of power there, and you can run corner strike, you can run slants. 
You got an angle route out of the backfield there. Pretty okay set. And here I just try to do a... I'm going to try to humor myself and run this play action double move route. I might have had a shot at it there, actually. I've only gotten one double move route off in my, I don't know, six to eight games. It was against cover three match. I actually completed it. You know, double move routes are just not very good, not very effective this year. They don't really stress defenders that much. And a lot of their play action passes are like that. So those, that throws those plays out the window. And, you know, like I said, having a lot of halfback, offset shotgun sets, it helps somewhat. But still, the halfback blocking is going to be around 50-50. So you're going to run into issues if you're facing a lot of heavy edge pressure, which forces you under center. And there's not really much you can go with as far as that's concerned either. So that really doesn't leave you with much left. You can't even run the zone read game very, very often because you have a wasted blocker with the receiver running um, a bubble screen. Not even a bubble screen, just a bubble motion that doesn't draw the defender and um, leaves the quarterback hung out to dry on a keep read. So it does have some good ideas in it, but it's awfully dependent on whether or not you're playing that type of opponent or not. I'm actually quite curious to see what this playbook will look like in Madden 18, if it's going to be close to the same, um, how the pass blocking will, you know, make it better. Because I believe that is a large part of what makes um, so, many of these, so many of these playbooks not really viable. So I have it at number 25. If it had better zone reads, it'd be around the area that the Raiders is. But, you know, it has those damn bubble motions on those zone reads, so that kind of eliminates that. And I also made a bit of a change. I have the Giants as number 32. They occupy the worst playbook in the game spot. Why did I do this? Well, I did this because I listened to Madden Universe on PX1's podcast talking about his Madden 18 impressions. And he mentioned how, again, because of the um, inability of this game to pick up edge blocking, not edge blocking, edge blitzes out of most of the shotgun formations in the game, it made the Giants playbook completely useless. And he's absolutely right. I had it at number 29 or so, or 28, but... On further review, yeah, I gotta agree. The Niners playbook you can actually have some success out of under the right circumstances. The Bears is terrible. The Cowboys playbook is pretty useless given how this game is designed with the edge blocking as well. So it's the same um, issues as the Giants does, but it's not nearly as bad as the Bears. The Bears playbook is disgusting. Actually, the Bears or the Giants could be the worst playbook in the game, and you couldn't go quote-unquote wrong with either one. So even though the Vikings are down there at number 25, it's more of a victim of the way this game forces you to play offense as opposed to um, a case of a lot of shortcomings in the playbook itself. But yeah, it does have the same shortcomings as most of the playbooks in the game do, but in this game when you're playing head-to-head, -head, if you can't block edge heat consistently, and again, there's only a few formations in the whole game that you can, and also still has some viable threat to run the ball, it's virtually impossible to play offense. The game becomes almost unplayable for you. So that is that. I'm really curious to see how some of these playbooks will look for Madden 18. Really am. And how the changes of the game will hopefully open up things a little bit more. And how these ratings, these rankings will change in Madden 18. So now that this is done, what do I do with the rest of the you know time that we have left in the game? Though for the last month and a half, do I... Well, I am selling my players now as we speak. I have my entire team on the auction block practically, and I'll probably, if I do continue playing, um, just find some players that I haven't really used that much, if at all, on the cheap, if I can. And I don't know. What do you guys want to see? Some run and shoot? I haven't really played much 3-4 this year. Maybe have some fun and run some spread out of the Niners or the Panthers. Run and shoot, Niners, Panthers, maybe some West Coast offense, even though I'll likely have to put up with edge heat hell when I do that. But I don't really like playing mutt regs very much. I hate playing much mutt regs. Most of these games, I used mutt regs all year as a lab. You know, mutt salary cap is where I got my most fun playing head-to-head -head if I wasn't playing an online CFM. Mutt regs is just a turd fest. I really dislike it. Most of the time, I don't want... I'm just going through the motions, and I'm, again, just labbing things. And 
most of the opponents are so bad or so not worth playing that I just lose interest and don't want to play after about a series or so. So, I don't know. I don't have anything to prove to anyone. I proved already all year long that I can hang in the Mutt Salary Cat leaderboards. I did very well for myself, I think. So, what should I do? What would you guys like to see, if anything? Let me know. Hope you guys enjoyed. I'll talk to you all later. Peace.